as with joy at the harvest. As people exalt when dividing plunder, further the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, who have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continuously, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm number 96. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the whole earth. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations. And his wonders among all peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is more to be feared than all gods. As for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols. But it is the Lord who made the heavens. Oh, the majesty and magnificence of his presence. Oh, the power and the splendor of his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord you families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Tell it out among the nations. The Lord is king. He has made the world so firm that it cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood shout for joy before the Lord when he comes. When he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness. And the peoples with his <clears throat> truth. A reading from Paul's letter to Titus. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age, to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself, a people of his own, who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now we're queuing up the video. I uh, just want to say thank you to those who recorded special music over the last couple of weeks. 
uh, it was a lot of work, but thank you. And now we'll hear Rachel Howard singing, What Child Is This? What child is this who lay to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping, whom angels greet with anthems sweet, while shepherds watch our keeping. This, this is Christ our King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring in Lord, the babe, the son of Mary. Why lies he in such mean estate, where ox and ass are feet? Christian fear for sinners here the silent word is pleading this this is Christ the King whom shepherds guard and angels sing haste haste to bring him Lord the babe the son This is the Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken when Crinius was the governor of Syria. All went with their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in the Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there the time came for her to deliver her child and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone round about them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, 
Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Well, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable and pleasing in thy sight, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, Merry Christmas, everyone. Advent is over. The wait has come to an end. And tonight we gather and celebrate the coming of the light of Christ into the world. And it feels good. And I know this year we have uh, all of our traditions are being disrupted. I hope everyone is staying safe. I hope everyone's staying wise. I hope you're taking care of yourself. And sometimes this year that means uh, not doing the normal family traditions, not gathering with the extended family, not doing this, not doing that. And that can be really hard. We've been not doing a lot of our normal things for a long time. And we still need to stay wise and safe and uh, stay sheltered. But it's also hard. And I acknowledge that. But we also want to point I also want to point out we were able to decorate uh, the church in a small way, kind of a mini greening of the church. So we have the poinsettias and the wreath. Thank you to the Altar Guild for making that happen. And I point that out because in American Christianity, in the early years of America, most Christians did not celebrate Christmas. Uh, a lot of Christians felt like there was too much pomp and circumstance. There was just too much going on in celebrating Christmas that was distracting people from focusing on serving God. And so they decided Christmas was just too, too distracting and we're not going to celebrate it. But of course, we Episcopalians always celebrated Christmas. And in around 1825 in Rhode Island, there was a Baptist minister on Christmas Eve walking around town and he walked past an Episcopal church and glanced in and they were having their Christmas service. And he walked in and saw the church in all its beautifully greened uh, grandeur with candles and the greening and, and just saw that the church was so beautiful that he walked in and sat down and, and joined them in worshiping God on Christmas. And it was so beautiful and amazing that this Baptist minister said, we need to start celebrating Christmas. This is awesome. And that's kind of how it spread. It was sort of the influence of the Episcopal church being beautifully greened in all its glory that reminded people that no no we need to celebrate christmas and christmas comes at this time of year intentionally that's how the early church chose that this would be the time of year that we celebrate christmas and back then the surrounding culture kind of the pagan culture would celebrate the winter solstice which was on monday and it was the longest night of the year. And if you think of daylight and nighttime as sort of battling, winter solstice is when the nighttime seems to be winning. And so they, they had a ceremony where as the sun went down on winter solstice and they were about to have the longest night of the year, they would gather and have a ceremony and they would look west and watch the sunset and they would say goodbye to the sun. And then they would turn east and they would do some kind of ceremony or pray to the gods or the, the powers that be that we hope and pray that the sun will return and that we will not end up spiraling into permanent nighttime. And that was sort of the cultural 
uh, pagan uh, idea of what they were celebrating this time of year. And so when the early church wanted to pick a time to celebrate the coming of the light of Christ into the world, they chose four days after winter solstice to kind of say, yes, we celebrate, we, we recognize the importance of this nighttime and daytime and this looking to the east and hoping for the light of the world to come. And we can put Christmas right near there and say, yes, it was Jesus. You don't have to look to the east anymore. We know the light of the world and it was Jesus who had come. And so today we celebrate Jesus coming in as the light of Christ, Jesus as the hope of the world and Jesus as a guiding light, shining a, a light on our path and showing us which way we ought to go. And so as Advent ends, it's kind of like, ah, oh, the wait is over. But it also feels to me like it's also like a commencement ceremony, you know, graduation. You finish college and then the ceremony to commemorate that ending is actually called commencement, which is a beginning because it's trying to emphasize the beginning of your journey now after college. And so it's like that today with Christmas because the wait is over, we're here, but we also commence to proclaim the light of Christ that has come. And it's very exciting and it makes me think, what is God birthing in you? Who is God calling you to be reborn as on this Christmas? When we look at the birth of the child Jesus, when we look at the light coming into the world, how is God birthing something new in you and who is God calling you to be? As in a, and it could be something small, it could be something significant, but it reminds me of a story when I was in seminary. It was that time of the school year when uh, you're kind of tired, you have a lot of exams and people are just a little down. There isn't a lot of energy or excitement. The energy level was just a few notches lower. And my one friend, Jenny, she uh, started getting really excited whenever she would encounter us, her friends. She just, and, and it seemed weird. Like we'd be standing in a group and she'd be with us. And then our friend Bob would walk up and Jenny would be like, Bob, hey, it's so good to see you. And so finally I, I said, Jenny, what's going on? Why are, you, why are you doing this? And she said, well, I noticed that I had low energy and then I was just being a little cynical and I wasn't very excited about life. But she said, I have a lot of great things going on. So I decided one thing to try is to just be excited anytime I encountered a friend. And she, she said she'd been doing it for a week or two at that point. She was like, at the beginning, I kind of had to fake it. I just had to fake it and say, oh, I'm very excited. To and just had to fake the energy level. But she said, you know what? Uh, it ended up becoming real. And I ended up truly embodying a spirit of excitement and genuine love towards my friends every time I would see them. And she said, it's kind of changing me into a more uh, positive, not necessarily bubbly, but just kind of a more happy-go-lucky kind of personality. And I love that where we kind of re-examine what we're doing in our lives and feel like we have agency to switch things up and to become something different. And I think this year we have this opportunity Maybe some of you have been tired, maybe uh, it being cold and these long nights and short days. Maybe we've just gotten a little lazy or depressed or just worn out. And now I ask, who is God calling you to be reborn as, as we celebrate the light of Christ that has come into the world? And do we really trust that we can live in and become that person? Because the light of Christ has come into the world and it should change everything. And it also gives us the strength, the perseverance, the courage, and the hope to actually become the people God is calling us to be. And this pandemic is going on. It's very long. It's annoying. It's taken away all these great things that we all enjoy in life. So maybe one thing that you need to be reborn as is someone who's more kind and gracious with yourself. Maybe in the pandemic, you think, oh, I'm, I'm just at home all day. I should be accomplishing this, 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 and this. And you find you're just not. And so maybe the person you need to be reborn as is someone who extends yourself kindness and grace and love. Maybe you need to write on a post-it note and stick it all over 
you're doing great or you're doing your best and that's good enough. And it, these are all really ways to remind yourself that the light of Christ has come into the world. God chose to enter God's creation and walk among us and live among us and laugh and cry among us. And God did that all out of love. And so how can we re be, be reborn as someone who knows that we are loved by God, as someone who loves those around us, and as someone who loves themselves? Which some days when you're stuck with yourself like I am, that can maybe be the hardest one of all. So Merry Christmas, the light of Christ has come and it's giving you power to be reborn. Who is God calling you to be reborn as this year in such a strange Christmas? Amen. And now, if you like, you can light a candle at home as we listen to Victoria Fussell sing, Mary, Did You Know? your baby boy would one day walk on water. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy would come to make you the child that you delivered would soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would give sight to the blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would come the storm with his hand. Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels tried? And when you kiss your little baby, you kiss the face of God. Oh, Mary, did you
the prayers of the people. As we join the angels and celebrate with joy the birth of the Son of God, let us offer prayers to God, who gives new birth to sons and daughters in every place by the birth of the Son of God. Glory and praise to you, O living God. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Mark, our bishop, for Jim, our priest, Frank, our deacon, and all who minister in Christ, and for all the holy people of God. Glory and praise to you, O living God. For all who put their trust in the incarnate child of God. Glory and praise to you, O living God. For the leaders of the nations and all in authority and for peace and justice. Glory and praise to you, O living God. For the conversion of the whole human race to the way of our blessed God and Savior, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Glory and praise to you, O living God. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, especially for Don, Sherry, Marquise, Mary, Alda, Joanne, Maria, Joan, Olivia, Nancy, Kellum, Blanche, Andrea, Nathaniel, Irene, Judy, Cherry, Dolores, Renee, Anne, Charlie, Joetta, Deborah, Clifford, Robert, Elaine, Ajamu, Susie, and Terry. For travelers, for the sick and the suffering, for the hungry and the oppressed, for those in prison and for the dying and the dead. Glory and praise to you, O living God. For our deliverance from all affliction, strife, and need. Glory and praise to you, O living God. Remembering Blessed Mary, Monica, Augustine, and all the saints, let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ. To you, O Lord. Source of light and gladness, accept the prayers we offer on this joyful feast day. May we grow in Jesus Christ who unites our lives to yours and who is God for all eternity through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now unmuting yourselves, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, also be with you, Jim. Jim. Peace. peace. Oh, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And Susan and Robin. Hi, Alice. Hi, Alice. Peace, everyone. Merry Christmas. Peace be with you, Susan. Hi, Susan. Hi, Susan. Merry Christmas, Robin. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to all. Merry Christmas to Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. That was beautiful. Merry Christmas. Victoria, that was wonderful. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Christmas everyone. Merry Christmas, Mark. Merry Christmas, Keep on flaming. Keep on flaming. Yeah. Right.
Hey, hey, how hey, are you, Lois? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Lois. Christmas. Hey, Lois. Merry Christmas. 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 Beautiful people. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Beautiful tree behind you. Merry Merry Christmas. Christmas. Hey, Christmas. Christmas. Peace, Christmas. Peace, Christmas. Peace, Christmas. Peace, Christmas. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Yeah. 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 Peace be with you. Christmas. Short sleeve. Wow, we're in coats here. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Rachel. 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 Hey, look at the whole Merry family. Christmas. Oh, hi, hi everyone. Hi, Dan, Dan. Nice, nice to see you. Hey, you're looking nice. good. Hi, Cap. Oh, hey, Christmas. Christmas. Oh, very nice. Beautiful, oh, thank you for singing. Beautiful singing. Beautiful singing. Beautiful singing. Beautiful singing. Beautiful singing. Beautiful singing. Merry Christmas. Hey, Merry Christmas. 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 The announcement uh, is I just want to say thank you to everyone who participated in the service. We still have a few more people uh, reading some things and saying prayers and stuff, and it's just been really great. Thank you to Kelly Marie Hickman, who reached out to a bunch of people and helped organize uh, the special music and all of that. Thank you to Ben Flint for uh, putting in some extra time, uh, making the music great. And thank you to everyone who participated. Thank you to all of you. I hope everyone has a safe, a wise, but a good Christmas where we can carve out time to remember that God, the light of the world, uh, came among us. So that's all the announcement I have. So Ben, if you can, let us uh, proceed with the doxology. Oh, hey, there's Sushi. Oh, my goodness. It's Sapion. Hey. Oh, look at the baby. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh, man. Christmas baby. What a beautiful oh, baby. Goodness. Oh, beautiful. Oh, beautiful. Oh, beautiful. Oh, baby. Oh, oh, oh. Peace, everyone. Peace. Oh, Peace be with you. Peace to the family. Many prayers for you guys. And we'll uh, sing the doxology and giving... God, thanks for all blessings, especially uh, that little boy, Sapion. Praise God from whom all blessings grow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Holy 
this is another day or <clears throat> We know not what it will bring forth, but make us ready, Lord, for whatever it may be. If we're to stand up, help us stand up. If we're to stand still, help us be patient. If we lie low, let us do that patiently. And if we're to do nothing, dear God, let us gallant. Make these words more than words and give us the spirit of Jesus. Amen. And now as our savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to sing. We join in heaven, follow with me thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is. When the Song of the Angels is Stilled, a poem by the theologian Howard Thurman. When the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and the princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flocks, the work of Christmas begins to find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among people, to make music in the heart. And now, so that we're reminded that we are physically distanced, but virtually together. We'll sing, make us one Lord, make us one. Make us one Lord, make us one. Holy Spirit, make us one. Let your love flow.
And now let us pray together. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. May Almighty God, who sent his Son to take our nature upon him, bless you in this holy season. Scatter the darkness of sin and brighten your heart with the light of his holiness. Amen. May God, who sent his angels to proclaim the glad news of the Savior's birth, fill you with joy and make you heralds of the gospel. Amen. May God, who in the word made flesh, joined heaven to earth and earth to heaven, give you his peace and favor. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. And now, to proclaim our joy, we sing joy to the world. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.